Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. My name is Lukman Siddiq and I'm the coordinator of Al Faisal Medhub under the International Office at Al Faisal University, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I'm honored to be your host for today. For those of you who don't know what Al Faisal Medhub is, it is an initiative under the umbrella of the International Office, College of Medicine, that aims at creating an online global community of medical students. Al Faisal Medhub covers a broad range of topics that are common to all medical students around the world. Al Faisal Medhub's primary objective is to help medical students learn more about the career opportunities available after graduating, as well as the steps involved in pursuing them. Since medical students are always confused about the paths that so ahead of them, Al Faisal Medhub's career guidance series addresses this challenge through the perspective of accomplished and experienced seniors. As you all are aware, we are now conducting the career guidance series Germany for all medical students, and this is in partnership with AMBOSS and DAAD. And today, we are excited to bring to you our second webinar of the career guidance series Germany, titled Detailed Orientation to the German Medical Residency Pathway which will be given by Dr. Mohammed Shabal -Loth. Dr. Shabal -Loth is an Amir Faisal University graduate. He has always dreamt of being a successful surgeon and is currently working on the stream as a medical resident in vascular surgery in Sana Hospital in Lübeck, Germany. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Dr. Shabal -Loth. It is our honor to have you, us, uh, have you with us today. We sincerely appreciate your time and efforts. Uh, thank you so much, Lukman. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, as Lukman said, yeah, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I am a uh, Al Faisal graduate uh, who happened to be in Germany to fulfill his dreams. And uh, I'm glad to introduce Germany to you. Uh, so, uh, would you like to start now, Lukman? Could we start now or should we wait a bit? Uh, doctor, we can start whenever you're ready, but before we start, I'd like to ask if you'll be taking questions throughout the session or at the end. So, uh, uh, I'll, I'll have, like, I have, I'll have a presentation. During the presentation, there will be pictures. So, during the pictures will be um, a bit of a break. Uh, you guys could ask, uh, could type your questions and uh, you could um, also ask during the picture time or during the break time. Uh, if there was a question that needs uh, like long elaboration, I'll tell you like I'll explain it at the end of the presentation. At the end, we will also uh, have uh, like a question answer uh, section. So three 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 modes of asking questions. Okay, doctor. Sure, we are uh, ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's start. Bismillah. So, uh, first of all, uh, yeah, uh, I'll be talking about Germany from a perspective of a person who studied in a face also uh, a person who's just like you guys. Uh, I won't be like uh, advertising for Germany. I'll just uh, tell you the advantages and disadvantages of going to to this country. Uh, we all know that residency is a big part of a doctor's life. Uh, it decides your future, to be honest, uh, and it decides how much fun you have in your life. Uh, because it's a part of your life, it's five to six years of your life. Uh, if you just take it as um, something uh, you just want to spend or you want to take it as something you want to live. Uh, so, uh, in my presentation, I'll talk about Germany in general, about the healthcare in Germany, about how to go to Germany, and uh, at the end, my journey to into going to Germany and a couple of advices. And uh, also, I have uh, two, two, let's consider them good news at the end of the presentation. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about Germany, or what is Germany? Germany is a federal country, which means each uh, each, it consists of states, 16 states. Each state has its own uh, has its own like government, and all of them uh, uh, go back to a big government at the end. Uh, I guess many of you heard that uh, one month ago there was an election. There was there was a German election, and there is a new uh, new councillor in Germany, which is 
better, not better, like which is good thing for us as immigrants. Uh, yeah, this uh, party, uh, a good party, let's say. So uh, it's a country in Central East Europe, the richest country in Europe, and uh, to be honest, the country that holds Europe together now. Uh, it's not a big country. Uh, temperature varies now. It's about two to three outside. So it is a cold country. Uh, and there is nearly 83 million people that live in Germany. So this means it's a bit of a crowded country. Uh, so um, this is a small break. This is one picture of Hamburg, uh, first city I came to, uh, the first city I lived in. Uh, I'll be showing pictures of Germany uh, during the presentation. So, uh, OK, what makes Germany special? Uh, as we all know, when we finish, we'll have to either work in Saudi Arabia, go to the States, go to UK, Canada, or Germany. Those are the biggest options that we have. Some people have other options. It's just a tasting or like a planting. You decide what you, what do you, which experience do you want to live. What made Germany special for me, and I think what will make it special for you, is uh, they have easier acceptance program for people who uh, are planning to do like difficult specialties like vascular surgery or transplant surgery or something like very specific uh, residency programs, I think uh, UK, Canada or the States, it's a bit uh, hard to go there and to do those specialties there in Germany, it's a bit easier. I'll be explaining uh, that in short, inshallah. Uh, they have something called universal health care, which means you just go to the hospital. You don't have to care about any bill, about paying anything. We see we see a lot of patients, they come, they just get diagnosed of cancer, and then they just uh, ask the doctor, when will my first chemo be? They don't go collecting money, they don't go uh, take loans from banks, they don't do anything. They just go there, pick, uh, pick their chemo, or like get treated, and that's it. So that's something I really found beautiful in Germany. Of course, you pay that from your salary, you pay taxes, approximately 40% of your salary is paid to taxes. But you get something in in return. Uh, free education also. All the universities in Germany are for free for everyone. So uh, if you're planning to live here for a long time, to have kids, to raise your kids in Germany, you don't have to care about them at all. You just the money you gain in Germany are money you enjoy, are money uh, money you just spend on yourself, spend on your life. Uh, the nationality pathway is a bit easy in Germany. I'll be explaining that too. So, yeah, getting rid of Syrian nationality is one of my goals. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, it's a sad truth that our nationalities are not the best nationalities and uh, we need to get rid of them at some point. And you get access to whole Europe, so you get uh, to travel whole in Europe whenever you want, wherever you want in Europe. You just uh, pick the train, the bus, the plane, and travel. So those are the like the attract things in Germany that led me to coming here. So uh, small questions. Good. So uh, how does the German System works. Oh, how does it work? Sorry. So, uh, system. The German uh, system consists of patient, doctor, hospital, and the fourth one is the government. Let's say, or like the insurance, uh, the government insurance. So, uh, the doctor gets paid from the hospital. The hospital gets paid from the government, and the patient pays the government his uh, taxes. Gets treated. You get your money from from the from the hospital itself. So uh, that's what makes Germany a bit special because there is like a system that's been going for like more than hundred years, their healthcare system. Uh, it's so complicated, you don't need to care about it just to have an overview about it. So that's, that you don't really, you don't deal with the patient. Originally, you, the patient goes to the doctor, pays the doctor and goes. Uh, here, the patient just goes to the doctor, the doctor treats the patient, that's it. 90% of 90% uh, of German hospitals are uh, private hospitals, and this this has its own advantages, advantages and disadvantages. Which means uh, the hospital they want to provide the best care, the best healthcare, so that people would come to them, so that will uh, will get paid more. So 
uh, you don't care. You don't have to care about that. It's just uh, a slide to show you the German system. Okay, so residency program in Germany. What does it what does it consist of? Uh, how do you go through it? First of all, when you work as a resident in Germany, you're called assistant arts. Arts means doctor. Assistant means assistant. Uh, it consists usually of, or uh, you work usually five to six years in this uh, in the program. At the end of, of the program, you will be a specialist, uh, which is called here Fachart. Uh, you do an exam, you get uh, you get to be a Fachart, and then uh, you find you you find yourself uh, a vacancy like every country in the in the world, and you work as a consultant. So uh, the good thing about working here is that uh, there is equality in, in the work itself. There is no R1, R2, R3, R4, those ranking. Uh, so this means all residents work like, uh, they work equally. Um, I did part of my, or like when I studied in Saudi Arabia or uh, did training there, uh, for example, in, uh, in the OR, the, the consultant will just uh, do the, do the OR and just leave. So you have to you have to do all the other work, uh, all the other uh, the rest of the work, and you'll have to do the documentation. You have to do everything here. Even the consultant has to do his own documentation. So uh, to be honest, this uh, let's call it slavery system does not uh, uh, does not exist here. Like they don't do they don't throw all the work at you as as a resident. Uh, the, uh, another good thing is that you can change your uh, specialty um, in here in Germany. So if you want, if you if you got into let's say I got into psychiatry program as I start, uh, the first time I started here, and then when I found out that this is not my thing, I just uh, changed it. So uh, this thing is a big advantage. You don't have to get stuck to the specialty that you started, and uh, the. Another thing is that it's objective wise. So uh, you don't have to do an exam every year. You have objectives. So for example, for me as a vascular surgeon, I have to do a certain um, number of certain uh, operation uh, um, in, in, yeah, in order to be able to jump to year two, let's say. So there are objectives for each doctor to reach every year. Once you reach these objectives, you'll, you'll jump to the next year. At the end, uh, you'll do the exam. Uh, they will collect your paper and see if you if you met all your objectives, so you could be uh, a specialist. So there is no exam to worry about if you uh, it's uh, continuous. Uh, let's say um, yeah, continuous studying. Uh, okay, so how to become a doctor? How uh, what are the steps that you need to take to uh, get into the German system? First of all, you'll get the you'll have to master the German language. Second of all, you'll have to master the German language. Third, until the tenth, you will have to, to do the German language. Without the language, to be honest, don't waste your time. So, uh, yeah, German language. After that, you get to contact the hospitals. I'll be talking about the system, how to uh, how to like contact hospitals. And then you have to do uh, the test, the Fachsprachprüfung, the test of German, the medical German language, and then the, and then you'll get the German approbation. So, language itself, I guess. Uh, Dr. Friedrich to, uh, talked about language um, on, on Thursday, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, German language consists of six big steps or six big, uh, levels, A1, A2, B1, B2, and C C1 and C2. And uh, in order to be, able to be able to work in a hospital, you'll have to get to B2 or you have to finish B2. Uh, preferably if you finish C1, that would be better. So uh, that's what I did. Uh, it is the most important step. Learning the language, it took me exactly a year from A1 to C1. I started in September, finished in September. And I, I took like two months of uh, free time during uh, during that. It was during my fourth year. Uh, of course, I think uh, the cost changed since um, I was a student. Uh, it cost us uh, 3,200 reals per level. I studied in Goethe Institute. I guess now they're uh, they're providing this uh, course in, in El Faisal, right? 
So uh, let's take questions now before we uh, jump to the next level. So uh, um, the first question is uh, if the German residency program is uh, accredited in Saudi Arabia. Uh, yeah, starting 2018, uh, the German uh, system was uh, the, the German system was uh, like accredited in Saudi Arabia as level one. Let's say that the German, the Saudi system, they rank uh, the board uh, like different boards according to class A, class B, class C. German system was class B, which meant that you had to take to do an exam. Now you don't have to do any exam when you go back to Saudi Arabia with the German board. Uh, uh, this is right. Uh, the thing is, there is a Nidam Ta'alim Tubbi in Germany. Uh, they're obligated to do it. The hospitals are obligated to do it. But some of them, uh, because as I told you, like uh, the department, the department, the chief of department himself, the, he has to teach, he has to teach you like the uh, fundamental or like he has to prepare you to do your exam. It differs from a person to a person. It differs from uh, like personality wise. Some of them are good at teaching. Some of them are bad at teaching. This is uh, this is the problem. This is the, like an, a disadvantage in Germany. If you got lucky with a good program, you you learn a lot. If you got unlucky, you can change. As simple as that. Uh, how long did it take you to go to Germany? Uh, I'll talk about later. I'll talk about uh, my um, experience later. Uh, if I'm a first year student, how should I orient myself with language and everything? I'll talk about two. I'll talk about that too. Uh, I'll give you like uh, a rough, uh, rough advice, and uh, I'll talk about the states later. So let's continue. Uh, I'll talk about uh, the other things later. So. Uh, once you once you get done with the once you're done with your language, uh, I advise you to finish B two at the end of year four. This this would be like the ideal uh, the ideal uh, plan because uh, contacting hospitals because uh, like when you when you when you get done with the language, it's good to do part of your internship in Germany, which will make you which will make your uh, taste. A bit stronger, which will make, which will get you to like impress the hospitals here in Germany. So, uh, if you have B two by the end of year four, for example, you could start contacting hospitals and telling them like uh, um, on June or July two thousand something, I'll be starting. I'll be starting my internship. I would like to do part of my. Uh, I'll, I'd like to do part of my internship with you guys, and uh, believe me. 99% of them will ask you if you have B2. So if you have B2, just uh, hopefully they will just take you. Uh, so you could plan your internship. You could plan your time. How long would you would you like to, to spend in Germany? I spent two months in Saudi Arabia and the rest I spent it here uh, because Alhamdulillah, I got lucky with finishing the language and preparing or like planning my internship uh, ahead, um, ahead of time. So... Uh, so I would suggest start to start contacting the hospital like in fifth year, because most of the hospitals are booked for the next six months. There are a lot of students here too. So uh, you need to get lucky and uh, get yourself a place. Uh, when you come to a hospital uh, here in Germany, the first point you need to do is to impress them. First of all, they don't care about your uh, previous um, inf information or like um, a previous education what they what do they care about is that you're willing to learn you're willing to work really hard um the joke about germans uh, that they are hard workers is really true i i've never seen uh, like a population of people who love to work more than germans uh so you have to impress you you will have to work really hard because they set uh, the standards really high uh, you'll have to be smart. You'll have to be active. There are a lot of sin, a lot of things I wish we did like when we were students or interns, uh, because the interns here are 
technically doctors, you could just throw patients at them. When we were interns, we, we didn't have this uh, ability, to be honest. Uh, with drawing blood, uh, inserting lines, uh, IV lines, or doing some those stuff, they do them they like this is the intern's job and if you want to impress you'll have to be good at those stuff not those stuff i mean but like you have to be active you have to run in the hospital and then do everything uh during our internship we just sat on our phones which is sad to be honest uh, you'll have to show them that you're interested that you're dedicated when i first when i first started here my language wasn't like the best language i i was i, I wasn't i wasn't able to like finish a sentence but uh, you need to show them that you're learning. You need to show them that you're dedicated in, uh, in like doing this. And uh, if you impress them, believe me, you'll grant yourself a position in a hospital here in Germany. I'll, I did that, alhamdulillah. I'll talk, I'll talk you through my experience. So uh, this, is, uh, this is also uh, what, what it will do. Like, it's not like the states where you have to do part of your internship to go to go into the system, but it will help you because uh, first of all, you get to talk with people, you get to learn the language more, uh, you'll get to impress, and you'll get to have contact. Like I, being in contact makes you more available. Let's say uh, if I apply to a job in Germany while in, while I'm in Saudi Arabia, I, I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't think a lot of hospitals would be interested in bringing someone from Saudi Arabia just to work for them. They don't know the guy. They haven't seen the guy. They don't know his language. They, they don't know anything about him. But like, if you were here, you did like two, two weeks, three weeks, a month with them. You impressed them. You showed them who you are. They'll just take you. And this is what happens with me, alhamdulillah. So during your internship, while you work in the hospital, you could start applying to hospitals and telling them, like, I want to work with you. If you worked in a hospital, as I told you, if you worked in a hospital, you did uh, your internship with them, uh, you impressed them, you showed them that you're good, they liked you, you liked them, you could just tell them, guys, I want to work with you, do you have a place for me? And uh, so uh, this is uh, this is uh, the advantage of having no center. Like in some other countries, there is a center, you have to apply to the center and they will throw you uh, like uh, in hospitals, I'll, like tell you, you go to this hospital, or like you're good for this hospital. Uh, here, there is no center. You just apply to the hospital itself. Uh, there's no time limit. You could start whenever you want. There's no like you start in June or July, and then you have to finish in July. If you pass July, you have to wait until next year or something. No, you just apply. If they want you, they'll take you. You start this. You start. On this date, you'll finish on this date after like five, six years. So uh, this is a very big advantage. You don't have to wait and do something in your free time to like to be able to to start your residency program. Uh, there's there are no crowds. Some uh, like we know if there is a center, everyone will be applying to big hospitals. It's also this, the case here, but like the small hospitals, if you apply to them, uh, if like there, if no one applies there, you get the, you get the chance. So, uh, which is uh, an advantage. I see it as an advantage. And uh, when you work in the hospital, you get to know them. Not like I apply to a center, they threw me in a hospital. I don't know the, I don't know who the, who's the, who's the, like the, who are the team or what are the team. If you work in, in a hospital, you like them, they like you, you work with them. If you don't like them, you just skip them. And uh, that's that's something good. The disadvantage is that uh, it takes a lot of time and effort because you need to apply to hospitals. You need to contact the hospitals. Uh, there are different types of contacting. I guess email is the weakest one of them. Uh, you, for me, uh, I took like two to three weeks of my internship time, and I just started traveling and meeting uh, meeting hospitals face to face to show them myself to show them that i'm interested and uh, so this one this thing took a lot of my time a lot of my effort a lot of my energy but at the end it paid off and uh, uh, a bad thing about it is that it uh, it depends on the state itself because the, like there is this rule in germany which you have to do the exam you have to get approbated and then you could work uh, but each state has its own way of applying the system. And uh, at the end, it needs your par parents' prayers uh, because it's all toffee. Someone uh, would, someone might do 
exact same steps as someone else and one of them will get accepted the other one won't uh it's not like there is no system but like if the hospital need the place they will get they will get you if they don't then uh sorry so uh the rule in germany if you impress the team you get the job as simple as that so small questions two questions please Does the residency program length depends on the specialty? Yeah, it does. So uh, some specialties are five, some specialties are uh, six. That's the range. Um, and uh, what else? Some of them, they require you. Uh, but like at the end of it, you will be... So for example, for me, my residency program is six years. But at the end of it, I'll be a vascular surgeon. So I'll be subspecialized, which is uh, technically equal to the other uh, to to other systems, like in other systems, you do general surgery for four years and then uh, subspecialty for two years, which is six years. For us, it's the same, it's the same thing. <laughs> Thank you, Mimo. Uh, can, uh, can we have hospitals offer? Uh, I didn't get the question, Hamza. Could you please? Uh, uh, you, could, you could ask me the question, Hamza. I didn't get it. Okay, let's continue. So, uh, so we said language, apply to hospitals, do part of your internship here. And then when, when you get a hospital, when you, when you get a chance in a hospital, uh, I'll walk you through, like briefly through my experience so we could get to understand uh, uh, like the process. So I finished my language at the end of year four. During year five, I started contacting hospitals. The first one was UKE in Hamburg. Uh, I did three months in transplantation or uh, transplant surgery. Uh, and then I started like doing parts of my internship here. At the end of my internship in September, I worked in the in psychiatry department in one, in one of the cities here. During, during my internship, I was preparing for this uh, exam. I'll tell you about it. So uh, at the end, so alhamdulillah, I was so lucky. My, uh, my certificate was uh, supposed to come out in September, like at the end of September. In September, I worked in this hospital. Uh, like after three weeks, uh, she told, the, the director told me, like, if you want to work with us, you're more than welcome. And I told her, like, at the end of this month, I will get my certificate and I, I can start working with you guys. Uh, so that was like perfectly planned time-wise. Uh, and then after that, you apply to this place, you apply to this work. You have to do something called Fachsprachprofung or, or German Medical Language Exam. So uh, it's a small exam. It's an OSCE exam, um, one station for one hour. You get to take history, uh, do a um, small physical examination on a patient for 20 minutes. After that, you write your report in German. Like, uh, what did you see? Like, uh, as if you're just writing uh, the discharge uh, report for the patient. And uh, you'll get the doctor doctor communication. You, talk, you discuss the case with uh, two or three doctors. Uh, the exam is a pace of, or fail exam. This exam is mandatory for everyone who wants to work in Germany. So, um, like after you like book yourself or like find yourself uh, a position, you just prepare for this exam or like start uh, preparing for this exam. Uh, you do the exam. If you pass the exam, um, you can you get uh, you get something called Berufserlaubnis or work permit. So, uh, we. I told you, like, there are two exams in Germany. This one, you when, when you get this exam, when you pass this exam, you get work permit in, in Germany for two years. Those two years uh, will allow you to work in this hospital, in this department for two years. Within those two years, you'll have to get, you'll have to get yourself approbated or, like, uh, get yourself uh, recognized in Germany as a doctor. And once you get that, you could work in uh, Germany, Switzerland, nee, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland, no. So you get to work in Germany, Austria, uh, Liechtenstein, 
Yeah, exactly. So in these three countries, because they speak German, uh, Switzerland, they speak German, but they're not part of Europe. So uh, uh, they have their own system, but it's so easy. Uh, forget about it. So uh, once uh, once you uh, get this work permit, you get to work in this hospital. Uh, the disadvantage of this work permit is that they don't count it in your uh, in your residency years. So you'll have to get yourself uh, accredited here in Germany, uh, which takes us to the next step: the approbation or uh, approbation. So. Uh, as I told you, within the first two years of you working in Germany, you have to get this certificate that you are a doctor who works in Germany, who gets, uh, who gets himself recognized as a doctor. There are two ways of getting this uh, approbation. First one is uh, getting your, paper, your curriculum, uh, face of curriculum studied. Uh, they will compare our curriculum with uh, the German curriculum in the state that you are in. So it's um, like... Um, this thing is uh, like, uh, what, how can I say it? So it's individualized. Like, uh, it's not like my papers got accepted. This means all of facial papers will get accepted. But like, it's most likely it's 80% that your papers will get accepted in the states that, in the state that I get, got my papers. And alhamdulillah, in my state, I got my papers uh, recognized here in Germany. Our curriculum matches the German curriculum here in my state. Uh, the other way is doing another exam called Kittlisse Uh This exam, uh, it takes three to six months uh, as preparation uh, for, for the preparation. Um, it's not a hard exam. Uh, people just tend to uh, prepare for it for a long time because the previous exam, the Fachsprache Pofung, you get as many tries as you can. Like uh, if you spend two years failing it, I know no one will do it, but like you get as many tries as you want. Uh, for this exam, you get only three tries. So uh, people like prepare for it really, really well. Uh, I guess if you started working, your language believe will be strong enough in, uh, to pass this exam. I never heard anyone who failed the exam three times. I know there are some cases, but like... Uh, so uh, some cases, some states will require you to do this exam. Some some states don't have this uh, GLY system. They they'll just tell you do the exams uh, so we could start uh, counting your uh, residency years. So to uh, summarize, language, 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 language. After that, ideally find yourself uh, positions during your internship. It's not mandatory. A lot of people came here after they finished their internship. It, as I told you, it's, it means nothing. It means it's, all, it's only for you. So you could uh, prepare yourself. You could uh, like uh, get to know the culture, get to know people, get to uh, develop your language, make improve your language, sorry. Uh, get your chances higher than someone who's not in Germany. That's the only advantage, advantage, but they won't tell you like you didn't part of your you didn't do any part of your internship in Germany. You can't start. No, it uh, it doesn't affect it at all. And then uh, finding yourself uh, a place or like a position, doing the exam, doing the Fachsprache Prüfung. After you pass it, you get to work for two years, uh, or like you get to work permit for two years. Within those two years, you'll have to uh, do your approbation, uh, and then there are no exams until the board exam, which is in five or six years. Questions? Ophthalmology and plastic surgery. So uh, the thing with ophthalmology and plastic surgery is that not every hospital provides or like has ophthalmology and plastic surgery. Um, there are like, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, fewer uh, places that, uh, that provide it than, for example, internal medicine or other, uh, other specialties. Uh, that's why it's a bit competitive, but it's not hard at all. My door-to-door um, -door neighbor is a Jordanian uh, guy. He's really nice. He's doing ophthalmology in his last year. So it's not hard at all. Um, it's do like way more doable than other countries, but uh, because the because the places are a bit uh, like fewer, uh, 
If I do German language in Saudi, is there an exam to pass upon applying for residency? Uh, I didn't say that you have to do a year in language in Germany. Mm, no. Uh, as I told you, uh, you I, did the, I did every German language in Saudi Arabia. I didn't do any language part here in Germany. Uh, you just have to do the, the language exam. Uh, so international language exam at the end of your uh at the end of your levels or B2 or C1, you just need to do this exam, the exam, uh, the international exam of B1, B2 or C1. And uh, no, it's not required to do one year or something language in Germany. But like, as I told you, uh, the language you learn in the Institute in Gotha or in al or anywhere, it's a language you learn, but you need to practice the language to be able to like speak it fluently. Uh, I finished C1. Uh, which was more than required. And I came here in UK. Uh, and to be honest with you, the only word, at, and I was in my first day in the round, I, the only word I, underst I understood was hepatocellular carcinoma, which is a medical term. Otherwise, I thought I was in Denmark or like Sweden. I don't know. The language was way more different than the thing that I learned. Uh, but once you get to practice a language you will you will uh, like you will make your case stronger but uh, if you want to just apply to hospitals you could apply it's not a big deal at all how much the, how much the exam hard and the acceptance hard in hospital hard okay so i understood that how how hard is the exam which exam do you mean and acceptance in the hospital as i told you it's it depends on uh how do you impress them how like if you if you're a hard worker if you're uh, a dedicated guy if you're like if you're active you will impress believe me uh this is the, like they want they want they know that you're uh, that you're not the per you're not the perfect german language person uh they know that you're a, re a resident so um at my like i did i told you i didn't like a year and something in psychiatry and then like, and then came to vascular surgery. At the beginning, I was in surgical stuff. I like, I didn't practice surgery for, uh, for around two years. So, uh, so uh, I, I told, uh, I told the consultant, like, excuse me, but my, my, my surgical knowledge is not the hard, is not the best. So he told me like, we know that you're a resident. We know that you're learning. That's what, that's what matters for us. So, uh, is there any affiliation of German hospital with, with Al Faisal where we could do the internship here? I guess um, the UKE in Hamburg, uh, they accept four to five students per year. Uh, during, I don't know during Corona, but like, uh, Alhamdulillah, I was the first student to go from Al Faisal to UKE and they, st they still accept students uh, to do part of their internship there. Uh, we're working on affiliation. The guys, uh, no, we, as me, the, the guys uh, in the team are working on uh, building affiliations in Germany. Uh, I contacted hospitals also to like to ask them if there was a, like if they accepted affiliation programs. Uh, they uh, they they have no problem, but like they need to be uh, they, uh, contacted officially. I would say they don't require the candidate support form. Uh, in Germany, usually, uh, like uh, in general, uh, all states require continuous uh, proofing except for four uh, states, which uh, the state I live in, uh, the most northern state in Germany near Denmark, uh, which is Schles uh, Schleswig Holstein, Bremen, Bremenhaven, and uh, another one I forgot it to be honest, which one was it? Uh, but like uh, now it's uh, so. Uh, I'll I'll talk to you guys about them uh, at the end of the at the end of the presentation. I'll tell you uh, what we're gonna do about this. Uh, so uh, as I told you, those are the four states that don't require the kinesiology. The exam itself is not uh, is not hard at all. It's very doable. Very uh, like everyone passes it when they are good in German. So uh, let's uh, take a break. I'll answer all other questions after, uh, uh, like uh, let's continue and answer all the questions after that. 
So, uh, living in Germany, what is what difference? What makes Germany different from other uh, countries? How do you live in Germany? What are the uh, things that you uh, that might like make you come to Germany or make you stay away from Germany? Uh, the salary in life, uh, you have to know that uh, taxes in Germany are uh, high, but you get something in reward, like you get something back from them. Uh, as I told you, free healthcare system. Uh, there is something that uh, you guys might like. Uh, so uh, in Germany, you, you get this social security, real social security. If I, um, God forbid, if I... Um, If I got an injury, I can't do my, I can't do surgeries anymore. My salary would be still paid until I, until I die, technically. Uh, if you work in Germany for more than two years, if you pay your taxes for two years, uh, whatever happens to you, like there are some ranking, but like they will, uh, they will keep paying you until you die because you worked, you paid your taxes. If you got sick, you just go to a hospital. Uh, so those, uh, you, like you get something in, uh, you get something back from your from the from the taxes from the high taxes you pay. The work range uh, here in Germany is between 40 to 48 hours per week, which means uh, eight to nine hours. Uh, they're strict about like going on time, taking your breaks. Once, uh, like I I know. If, um, I was in Saudi Arabia. I know people who like would do 36 hours of um, uh, on call. Uh, here, they're really strict about their uh, working time. If you work like three minutes as uh, like extra or overtime, they will count them for you. They will uh, collect them for you and give you free days or or money at the end. So uh, nothing goes. Uh, To waste, uh, like I, I stay, for example, in surgeries, you can just uh, say at four o'clock, I need to go home while the, while the patient is still, uh, is still on the table. So they count those hours for you. They give you free time they give, or give you money uh, like in, uh, as a compensation. But in other departments, four o'clock, you just have to go home. Uh, the salary is among the highest paid, uh, highest ranked people uh, here in Germany. Uh, As a resident in R1 or like in your first year, uh, your salary uh, ranges between 50 and 65,000 euros per year, which is without taxes. After taxes, you get uh, approximately 3,000 to 3,500 euros per month after the taxes. So this is only your this is your money, and this is without the on calls. So you get paid more with the on calls. Uh, the citizenship in Germany, which is uh, something uh, we don't uh, like. It is something important we can't just forget. Uh, when you work in Germany as a doctor, uh, there is like a special, let's say, a uh, special type of uh, residency here uh, for people who are uh, highly qualified. So doctors, engineers, uh, teachers, and people who, uh, with our PhD, uh, people who have PhDs. So uh, once you, you are one of those people, you get something called blue card, which is, Yeah, something equivalent to the green card. The blue card, uh, like you take this blue card after 21 months. If you if you if you like held this blue card, you paid your uh, taxes for 21 months. 21 months, uh, you get permanent residency here in Germany. The uh, citizenship itself, uh, when you pay your taxes or like work as a doctor for five years you get to apply to uh, getting a citizenship. So it takes five to six years uh, because they need to process your papers and all that stuff. So uh, five to five and a half years uh, is uh, like the time you get uh, till you get your citizenship here in Germany. So uh, another batch of questions before I go uh, to my experience. So uh, someone asks if we want uh, to change cities after a couple of years uh, after we start the residency. Uh, that's something I did. You just apply for the hospital in this city. Uh, if they uh, accepted you, uh, you just go. Uh, the thing is, if you already if you already have your, your approbation or you already uh, yeah, if you have your approbation, you don't have to do anything else. You just go there, apply for the uh, like 
what is it called? Nakabat lot of the earth camera there. You just tell them uh, I changed my job and that's it. So uh, before you get your uh, approbation, you, there are there is a lot of paperwork you need to do. So I advise you guys, or like I would suggest, if you went, if you committed to a state, you just stay in the state until we get your approbation. You can travel wherever you want. Do we have to have an international exam or Goethe certificate is enough? No, uh, Goethe itself has its own internet, like not its own. They have international exam. So uh, there is this. Uh, they give you a certificate of uh, like attending attendance, and you have to do an exam. No, you have to do. There is an international international exam that you have to do. No, as I, uh, someone asked if I pass the medical language test, do I have to apply to the hospital I will work in for two years myself or will it decide, be decided for me? No, nothing decides anything for you. You uh, apply for the hospital, uh, you get your contract or something with them. Uh, you tell them like after three months, four months, I'll work with you. In the state that I work in, you have six months, so you could apply for the hospital you could work for six months before you do your fachspapofen, which is something they uh, like. They make they make your life uh, easier. Uh, and uh, yeah, technically speaking, ninety percent of states they do this now after Corona because they need doctors. So they will tell you like work for six months. Within those six months, do your fachspapofen. It's okay. So you don't have to do the test. But like uh, this is something came after Corona. I don't know if it will stay. Uh, it will stay after it. Uh, can you talk about the accreditation of the German board outside Germany, especially in the whole program, will be in Deutsch German. So, uh, as I told you, accreditation, each country accredits uh, other countries uh, depending on their, uh, on the, like, depending on uh, their criteria. Saudi Arabia did not uh, recognize German or like they recognized Germany as class B. Before 2018, uh, starting 2018, uh, they started accepting Germany uh, like completely without doing any exams. Uh, the yeah, it's in German, but like everyone speaks English. I'll talk. I'll talk about that too. Do you recommend doing fellowship in Germany instead of residency? Uh, it won't be a problem, but. Uh, like it would be very hard because you already did in English and Arabic and whatever language you uh, did the residency program in. And then learning the language after that is going to be a bit hard for you. I wouldn't recommend that. To be honest, you can do it. It's not a problem. Uh, in our hospital, we have a doctor, an Indian doctor who doesn't speak German at all. When he comes, he just speaks English. Uh, he did the same thing. He did this. Uh, I don't know how he did it. But I think it will make his life harder because everyone speaks German. Um, and learning German uh, after that would be hard. Do you know about Hospital of Heidelberg acceptance? Uh, you mean University Hospital of Heidelberg? Um, yeah, uh, one of our one of our Faisal students is currently working in uh, University Hospital of Heidelberg. Uh, in uh, hospitation recognized as a month is okay. Um, yeah, hospitation is. I don't know about Al Faisal now, but in our years, hospitation was uh, recognized as uh, internship. Uh, I don't know if Al Faisal changed their criteria since then. Uh, yeah, so uh, you need to ask university, the university itself, if they, uh, our university, I mean, if they accept uh, months in Germany as part of the internship. Uh, last two questions. One asked if the salary is before or after taxes. As I told you, uh, as a resident, you get 2,900 euros or between 2,900 and 3,500 after taxes. So uh, that's your money. You don't have to pay anything from it. Can you please type the names of the states that didn't require the I'll, uh, I'll do that in a while or like I'll tell you about it. So uh, we... Uh, we're reaching like the end part of the presentation. After that, we'll take all the questions. Uh, so when to start, as I told you, in fourth year, uh, 
until fourth year if you're done with the language until the end of your fourth year. So if you've started uh, Al Faisal now, we are providing German classes. So uh, there is a program for you guys. I like I can't advise you when to start learning the language because they have a program. But in our time, there wasn't a language course in Al Faisal. We had to do that on our own. So uh, we uh, and uh, during fourth year. We, we attended the, uh, the hospital from uh, 7 a.m. until 5, and then after uh, from 6 until uh, 9.30, we were in the institute. So uh, that was a bit hard. Now it's a bit easier with uh, facial classes. Uh, so I guess by the end of fourth year, if you're uh, done with uh, B1, and now uh, they have this scholarship program to finish B2 in summer here in Germany, which is awesome. I find it really, really awesome because you get to get here, you get to like speak the language more often, more than when you just speak it uh, uh, in the class. Uh, and then uh, during fourth, the during fifth year, apply for uh, apply for internship months here in Germany if you can. If you can't, it's not a must. Uh, Coming here to Germany uh, has uh, like there are two ways. Either if you if you're planning to come here for less than three months, uh, you'll have to apply for Schengen visa or like, tourist visa. Uh, those are the rules here in Germany. Anything less than three months is Schengen. Anything more than three months is uh, 17 year or like any type of other uh, visas here in Germany. For me, I came with uh, Schengen visa. I extended it. Extending your visa is very easy and very simple here in Germany. They didn't, they didn't just want you to have your insurance, medical insurance, because you'll be private here. You won't, you, you're not working, so uh, it's a complicated story. Uh, so you, they just want you to get your uh, medical insurance, which costs nothing. Uh, they will. Uh, they, they want you to have your. They want you to have money that's uh, like your own. Like you can cover your expenses on your own for the for the period you're gonna stay here in Germany, and they want a reason for you to stay in Germany. So um, I came here with uh, the, with the Schengen visa for UKE for three months. After that, uh, I um, secured like multiple hospitals. Uh, I like I planned my stay here in Germany, and uh, I got to stay for a whole year here in Germany with my Schengen visa. They just ex extend it for you. Uh, so you could uh, like you could stay and do your your stuff in Germany. After that, after I uh, after I, alhamdulillah, like found this hospital that would take me, I went back to Saudi Arabia, changed my visa, and came back to Germany with a working visa. So uh, it's not complicated at all if you followed the rule. Uh, problem with us, I know a lot of people who try to trick the system to do something that uh, to act smart, to be honest, and some of them are still stuck in Saudi Arabia because like dude Germans are straightforward people if you go straightforward with them you get whatever you want if you try to the foot door uh, you just screw yourself up uh, one advantage of Germany is the autobahn uh, yeah you get to drive as fast as you can that's something very attractive for me good uh, living in Germany uh, the cultural differences between us and Germans. The first thing is that Germans are very, 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 very hardworking people. Technically, I don't, I don't know what uh, what type of phones do they have. To be honest, they just got to work. They they get to work. They change their uh, they wear the uh, the work uniform, scrubs or something uh, inside the hospital. And they leave their phones either in the drawer or in the in the locker. And they get to see their phones only in their break. So uh, that's something, when I first came here, uh, that's something wasn't in my head. People, they just work, they, they work. Those people, they just work. So you need to like be like and be very hard, a very, very hard worker to, uh, to blend in the system, to be honest. If you just spend your time on your phone or something, they, Technically speaking, um, they notice that they won't, uh, you won't have a chance here. Uh, they like obeying the rules. They hate the Kaya's thing. So, uh, mainly, everything has its own rule. 
every single thing. So uh, if you obey the rules, they love you. If you if they if you don't, they they just hate you. Um, I'll give you an example, a small example. For example, public transportation here. Uh, I've been uh, yeah. First of all, I was in Hamburg for three months. I've I saw the like people the control the people who control the, your ticket one time only in those three months. Uh, people who don't obey the rule or like uh, jump in trains or buses without uh, uh, without uh, without ticket are mainly Arabs. Sorry. So uh, they they just they just pay. They know that no one will control that, and they will, they they just obey the rule. They they do everything per, by the book. They're honest people. Uh, for example, whatever you write in your CV is, they believe it. Uh, they won't. They will never ask you to prove uh, if you if you did some if there is something uh, like uh, if I said I was head of some com community or club here. They will never ask me to provide proof. But but if they found out that you lied, you're just done. You won't get the job at all. Uh, I'll give you an example. They, like they ask you, they're so honest that they believe you whatever you say, and they're they're very honest when they say something. So I'll give you an example. Uh, here in Germany, there is uh, there is this uh, ID card for doctors. Uh, you, when you go to a pharmacy, when you want to get um, medication uh, without uh, without a receipt, you have to provide that you you have to prove that you're a doctor for you to get this antibiotics or something. Uh, that's uh, that's only given by with the receipt. So I asked uh, the, the pharmacy worker for a medication. She told me, like, you don't have a receipt. I told her I'm a doctor. So she wanted to get the medication. When she came back, I showed her my ID that I'm a doctor. And she told me, like, I didn't ask you for that. You just said you're a doctor, you're a doctor. That's it. So uh, this is their mentality. They, uh, when, you, when you tell them something, they just believe it because they believe that you're, you're honest when you say something. The difficulty that we found uh, here is that those people they don't talk much so uh, if you're not active if you if you for example if you're in a hospital if you sit on your, on your own with your phone no one will come and talk to you no one will get like you won't get you won't get to like experience being a doctor in germany if you if you weren't active if you weren't like asking them going there and uh, being being active uh, i was in uk my first 3 months here in germany uh, yeah, I had this uh, intern mentality where you just you just want to spend your time and then go back home. Uh, believe me, I didn't do anything. Like I didn't the first month, I did not profit anything because I was on my phone or on my laptop the whole time. They didn't even ask me to do something. They didn't even tell me come see this, come learn this. If you don't like run after the thing that you want to learn, uh, they just assume that you don't want and uh, forget about you. So. Uh, a lot of people say that Germans are not very, uh, uh, let's say, um, social. Uh, so when you sit in the train, no one talks to the other, like in Italy, for example. Uh, but when you talk to them, they're really, really, really friendly people. They're really nice, uh, really humble. Uh, but like they're not, they're not actively social, to be honest. And this is something different between uh, us and them. For if, for us in the Arab countries, when you sit in a plane or you sit in a public place, everyone will talk to you. Uh, there's nothing wrong and, and right in this. It, it's a like it's a taste thing. Someone would like it. some people like this, some people don't like it. So, uh, but this is a difficulty for us here. We we're very social uh, people as Arabs. Uh, here, it's something a bit different. So. Uh, Questions? Uh, you sh uh, how much money do you, sh you should have to get the visa? From our, uh, from my time, I, when I applied, like getting the Schengen visa, you needed to get, you needed to have a salary and they'll divide the salary. Uh, your dad has to have a salary and they will divide the salary on uh, the family members and all that stuff. Uh, but it was like, unofficially said uh, to us from, from experienced people, like if you want to apply for a Schengen visa, you have to have uh, five digit numbers in your account. So 
I don't know about that now. Uh, I guess now it's uh, a bit easier because when I came here, uh, there was a lot of immigration uh, for, for unfortunate people who came from Iraq or Syria. So they were a bit strict, especially from Saudi Arabia, because uh, if I had the Syrian nationality and I came here to Germany with a Schengen visa, I could just apply for asylum and, that's, and live here as, um, like as um, what do they call them? I forgot the name. So, uh, so they were strict from Saudi Arabia. Now I guess it's a bit easier. What other things are necessary for us to uh, have while applying, like giving this uh, SMLE exam and certificate of good conduct? Yeah, uh, I'll talk about that. Uh, exactly. So uh, I'll talk about briefly about the papers that you guys need to have. Uh, in details, they will be on the Facebook group that I will uh, talk about uh, in a while. Uh, while working with the uh, work permit, do you get a salary? Of course, you get full salary. Uh, they they can't um, they can't like not give you a full salary. So uh, let's continue, and then uh, I'll talk about uh, I'll talk like uh, briefly about. Uh, the steps to, to get here and uh, briefly about my state, for example, and uh, other states would be uh, other states would, uh, would be like similar. Uh, so, uh, as I told you, uh, during my fourth year, I studied German. By the end of fourth year, I was done with German. I applied to hospitals. First one was UKE in, in Hamburg with an affiliation with Alfaisal University. Uh, so I came here. I uh, secured, uh, like I planned my stay here uh, with different hospitals. So um, I secured my stay and for a whole year. And during your whole year, I get I got to uh, like uh, to extend my Schengen visa and uh, learn here, uh, socialize with people, learn the language, and learn how to impress the hospitals. In August, I took a month off and uh, decided to go actively search for hospitals for me to work because uh, at the beginning I was just uh, developing my language, improving myself. And then you reach a point where you, you, at the end of your internship where you decide, yeah, now I need to work. So uh, I took a month off and uh, started roaming around in Schleswig-Holstein in the state that I'm in right now. And um, as I told you, during this time, I just printed my CV like 1000 copies and uh, divided, uh, started looking for hospitals that are working, that are looking for doctors, divided them uh, by like the area. So I don't spend my whole time just traveling. Uh, went to hospitals, met the, met the directors themselves, uh, themselves would uh, like met them personally. So you could speak with them. If you send them an email, uh, imagine how many emails do they get per, per minute or per day. Uh, you have to go there, you have to show them that you're interested in them, you have to show them that you can speak, everyone can Google Translate nowadays. So uh, you'll show them your dedication, you'll show them your language, you show them yourself, you show them your personality. Uh, because working with someone, if they work with someone they know, uh, that will be easier for them. Um, I contacted many hospitals, I went to like um, many, many, many cities. One of them was uh, psychiatry. They wanted to. Say, to be honest, at the beginning, I did. I wasn't very selective about the thing. I just wanted to start to like settle down in the country and then move move forward to the thing that I that I wanted, which is surgery. So uh, I found this psychiatry hospital where where they wanted a doctor. I talked to the director. She told uh, she told me like, okay, work a month for, with us or do a hospitation for a month with us, and at the end we'll decide. So uh, I worked with them for three weeks and uh, on the 24th of September, which was my birthday, she came to me and she was like, um, okay, the uh, team likes you, uh, patients like you, I liked you, you showed good dedication, you, you, you're improving, you, you showed that you're a good worker. So if you'd like to work with us, uh, we're open. So uh, I... Uh, after that, she gave me something official that they will uh, they will accept me if I uh, if I wanted to work with them, which is called Suzag or Wadamal. Uh, 
بالعربي so uh, they uh, I got this paper and I then applied for uh, something called Landesamt here uh, which is the place where you apply for where you apply your uh, application uh, in each state there is a Landesamt that decides which paper are uh, which papers are uh, important for us which papers are uh, which papers we want to uh, we want for a doctor to work with us here in Germany uh, here in Schleswig-Holstein uh, I'll tell you about some states, like three different states. Mainly, the states would be something similar, to, for uh, something similar, with, uh, and why I chose this state in particular. Uh, for example, here in Schleswig-Holstein, uh, you get uh, you get to work for six months before you do your Fachsprachprüfung. So you, they will give you a work permit. You have six months to do your Fachsprachprüfung and two years to do your Kenntnisprüfung. So uh, that was an advantage for me, which uh, because I, I got to work, I got to experience and I got to improve myself during those six months. Uh, and then uh, uh, so uh, and then I could do my exam. That was an advantage in Schleswig-Holstein. Uh, the other advantage is that uh, I have to uh, like uh, experienced colleagues from El Faisal who, who were in this uh, state and got their uh, got their curriculum uh, equivalized or like uh, studied here in this state and they got the approbation without doing the Kentis of Hofung. So um, that was um, an extra extra motivation why I stayed here in this state. Uh, about the state is that, uh, there is something about the state is that you have to be in the state to apply. So if you're in Saudi Arabia, you can't apply in this state. The state requires you to be in Germany to apply for it as a doctor. So that was an advantage because I was here. Uh, some other state, they don't require you to be uh, in Germany to apply your papers. Uh, my state uh, also requires you to have a Tuzag, to have Wad uh, Hamel for you to be able to apply in this state. Uh, some state, they just, uh, if you want to apply your papers to them, you just apply them from Saudi Arabia. Some people from El Faisal already did this and already working in, in the state, which is um, Rhineland Fals. Uh, the state or like the two states, Rand and France, and uh, the state where Frankfurt is. Uh, those, uh, this state, they uh, they don't require you um, to be in Germany to apply. You could just apply there, uh, even if you're in Saudi Arabia. But they require you to do the exam before uh, before start working and uh, doing the candidate's profile is a mandatory in the state. So. Uh, these were the point. These were the points where uh, w w that made me decide I want to come here in uh, to Schleswig-Holstein. Uh, some people they didn't get the, this opportunity because uh, not everyone got the opportunity to coming here. Alhamdulillah, I was lucky. So uh, some people applied from Saudi Arabia. If you apply from Saudi Arabia without coming here to Germany, uh, the system is something similar. is not very uh, hard. Also. So, uh, for example, uh, my colleague who was in my batch, uh, Dr. Hassan, he's working now in Germany in uh, Rhineland Pfalz. Uh, he didn't get to, to come to Germany in his uh, internship years. And uh, he decided to, while being in Saudi Arabia, he applied or like sent his papers, his uh, requirement required papers to uh, the lands and in Rhineland Pfalz and told them, I want to work as a doctor here in, uh, in Rhineland Pfalz. So they studied, they, they studied his paper. They told him, okay, come here. Uh, you could come here, start. Uh, um, you'll have time to do your exam uh, while doing your, uh, while uh, studying after, after doing your exam, sorry, you could uh, start working with the work permit and uh, then doing your uh, campus profile. So that's another pathway if you wanna, like, if you wanna work here in Germany. Uh, Alfaisal students mainly are located either in Schleswig-Holstein, in Hamburg, in Rhineland Pfalz or in Baden Baden in um, Heidelberg. Uh, Heidelberg also is like uh, Rhineland Pfalz. You apply your papers, you go there, do the exam. One of Alfaisal's students studied three days for the exam for the Kentness Pofung. Did the Kentness Pofung told them, okay, I have the approbation, let me work in Germany. So uh, it is, it's like you choose what things that suits you here in Germany. It's like, it's not like there is one system you will have to do it if you don't do the system you don't you don't get accepted so uh, and this is this this variety this variety is sometimes an advantage because not everyone gets to come here for example not everyone 
um, has this good curriculum. Some people who are attending today are not from El Faisal. So um, some other universities, even in my state, they don't get uh, this clash system or like they don't get the equivalent system. So uh, they'll have to do the exam. Uh, now, in, during Corona, they're, they're accepting a bit more people. They're more uh, open about accepting. You get to many states now, you get to work before doing the Fachsprachprüfung, which is something really nice. So during working, you get to improve your language because, like, experience, exper uh, yeah, experiencing the language uh, makes you, like, improves your language way more than just studying it from a book or listening to someone's. Uh, teaches you. Of course, you need that because you need personal advice. You need a German person to teach you German. Um, some people tried studying German from books or from internet. Um, I don't think this helps. Okay, so uh, after that, I worked here in uh, in the psychiatry. In psychiatry, uh, alhamdulillah, my papers were uh, my papers were uh, accepted. Everything was uh, good. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, one of the requirements in Germany is to be approbated in Saudi Arabia, which is doing the SMLE exam and getting, uh, uh, getting yourself recognized from the, I don't know what it's called, um, Saudi Commission of Health, I don't know, something. So uh, doing SMLE, just passing SMLE is enough, which is a week of studying or less. Uh, some other papers, as I told you, B2 is, is a must here in Germany. Uh, getting, um, like getting yourself recognized in Saudi Arabia before coming to Germany. Uh, the rest are just papers. I'll sort them in the Facebook group. And then after that, I got my approbation. I worked in the psychiatry until like, I found out that it's not my thing. It's not the thing that I want. I started looking for uh, other jobs in my state because, uh, alhamdulillah, my wife is with me from Al-Faisal University, Kautar. And uh, I want her to like go through the same steps, inshallah, do the same thing. And once she gets her opportunity, we could move in Germany. So, and Lubeck itself is a very, very, very beautiful city. I'll show you pictures of it later. Uh, so uh, after that, we get to move wherever we want in Germany. But I moved in Schleswig-Holstein. Uh, I found this hospital, they're providing vascular surgery. The director himself is Syrian. Uh, the consultant is Syrian. So. <laughs> <laughs> like we we have a community here and this is this is something good uh, because like uh, if there's something you don't understand if there's something at the beginning you need someone who who understands where do you come from what are the what are your what are the things the difficulties you you're facing right now so they, they could help and alhamdulillah i'm so happy with my life here uh, yeah uh questions There is medical license examination. Yeah, that's it. That's the approbation exam. Uh, the approbation is an exam. I didn't do it myself. I studied uh, a bit for it in case my my papers weren't accepted. It's um, like it's also uh, one OSCE station, but like it's a, a long one where you get to discuss real medical stuff, not just like taking history and physical examination, like providing. A, a differential diagnosis and some, some like in the Fachspach woman they just want to test if you are a real doctor who really speaks German and the Kendis Pofung they do like a real exam they will ask you about your thoughts about the patient how would you manage the patient how would you so um, it's it's like a long uh, OSCE station in German where they get in depth in, in medicine but it's not like uh, it's not something very hard is the internship here done at one hospital or uh, can you rotate? Of course you can rotate. Uh, I did in more than, uh, I did my internship here in five hospitals. So of course you can rotate. You just, as I told you, secure yourself a place and you can work. You could do uh, your internship there. Uh, hospital Sion is working for free or will you have a salary? No. Um, as a foreign student, no, you don't have, you don't get to have a salary, but uh, many hospitals, they will provide you accommodation for free or like for something, 100 euros or 200 euros per month, which is nothing. Um, I got to have, uh, they will feed you for free. So for 
German interns, they get to, they get paid uh, and they have accommodation and they have free food in the hospital. For us, uh, we weren't getting paid, but uh, some, hospi some hospitals provided me with uh, um, accommodation. Some, some of them, they, uh, mostly all of them, they, they provided us with food, with stuff that we, we needed, but no paid. Uh, I don't think you will get paid. Uh, so even as non-Saudi, we have to give this SMLE to have a facial certificate accreditation in Germany. Uh, you have to do the SMLE either way if you wanted to work in Germany, even if you didn't want to get your uh, facial certificate accredited in Germany. So uh, if you want to work in Germany, you have to be accredited in Saudi Arabia, which is uh, just passing the exam. Uh, if you just want to pass the exam, you need three days of study. And it's not hard at all. How much time does it take to reach B2 level? Is it hard? Is it a hard language to learn? Um, reaching a B2 level, as I told you, if you now you have a system in El Faisal, uh, if you uh, follow with the guys, uh, with uh, Dr. Friedrich or with, uh, with the guys in El Faisal University, they could, like, there is a plan which, uh, alhamdulillah, they, they put it in, uh, like, uh, so uh, I guess. If you started with them, you will finish. Uh, you'll finish by the end of year four. You'll finish B two by the end of year four. Um, if you want to do it on your own, it's going to be extra work for you after after your study. So, personally, I would advise uh, taking this opportunity. It's a really great opportunity. It is is it accepted to get? Uh, is it easy to get accepted in trauma surgery? Of course, it is the most common. Yeah, it's like internal medicine here in Germany. Internal and trauma surgery are the most common um, specialties uh, that people get accepted to here in Germany. Its future is very, very, very promising, especially here or if you go to Austria. Uh, I went to Austria, like at every corner there is a trauma surgeon. Uh, there is orthopedic or trauma surgeon because uh, people go skiing, get uh, injured, and then they come. They they come to them. Or uh, German is filled with uh, all people. Uh, just info on the side: the number one reason or the number one cause of death in Germany is Alzheimer, because they have a really good healthcare system, and uh, because uh, yeah, so uh, they get to live more. They get to live, they get to outlive diseases. So uh, a lot of them get their hips, uh, hip, uh, hip tip or um, hip replacement. So uh, yeah, it's, it's very promising in Germany and it's very like, uh, uh, I don't know, I forgot the word. So uh, yeah, trauma surgery is, uh, is like internal medicine here. You just get places everywhere. How did I skip my approbation? Uh, as I told you, um, in my state, you have two choices. Either do the exam and uh, get yourself approbated or prepare your uh, curriculum. I'll talk about that in the Facebook group. I'll provide you with all the required information about this. And uh, there, there is um, like something, not judge, but someone who studies your paper and uh, like compare them to the German curriculum. Uh, and if your system, if your university system matches the German system, you just, uh, they just tell you, uh, okay, you can start working here. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a question about orthopedic surgery. It's like trauma because uh, a lot of hospitals, they, uh, they do, uh, yeah, they, they combine trauma surgery and orthopedic uh, in one, uh, in one uh, department. So when you graduate from that, from the program, it will be, uh, you will be, uh, a consultant in orthopedic and trauma surgery, both, which is something uh, you don't see in any, in any other country. Uh, can you list the hospitals you did an internship in? I will, inshallah, in the group. Uh, elective for bad Mustashfayat, it's Medjani, except for, uh, I, for me, it was Medjani. I was getting um, advantages, except for UKE, you, get, you have to pay something. Uh, so, uh, only UK it got like I, I had to pay them. Other ones are for free. A trauma surgery is mainly ortho and vascular. It's mainly ortho and trauma, so ER stuff. Uh, vascular is vascular on its own. 
Uh, this is university of, uh, university of Hospital in Heidelberg, except a physical curriculum without doing the exam. No, uh, it depends on the state. The state itself doesn't accept uh, any other curriculum. You have to do the exam. Uh, you can apply your papers. They don't tell you, uh, don't apply. You could tell them, I want to um, apply my papers for uh, like to check if they match the German system, but uh, I don't uh, uh, I don't think you will uh, you will get uh, you will get the, this because none got that. Uh, the link of the Facebook group, yeah. So uh, I'll be announcing. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we, uh, you know, we're starting a Facebook group where we could like it's a hub for us where we could where you could, guys could ask questions, where you could uh, um, provide uh, or like uh, post your questions, uh, inquiries, uh, papers if you want, also. Uh, I'll be uh, posting. Um, I'll be posting this presentation first of all, uh, links and uh, media that will help everyone who wants to, who who will uh, go in this career. So the guys will, uh, the guys uh, um, will send you the link, inshallah. Uh, the other thing is that for the Fakshpa uh we're uh, planning. We uh, will do inshallah a course on. Uh, on fast power itself. So uh, preparing and training for students who want to do the fast power but like not everyone can do it. You have to finish B1 or B2 and in, in, in like to be able to start preparing for this program. So we're taking it to the next level, inshallah. Uh, so um, this is something we're, uh, we're planning right now. I don't know how many students have already finished B1 or B2. Depending on that number, we will uh, will then uh, decide when we we'll, when will we start uh, doing this course, inshallah. So this is something uh, with the help of uh, of the guys. Uh, they yeah they they're working day and night. They follow me all the time. Uh, so uh, inshallah, we'll uh, we'll announce this soon for anyone who finished B one and B two. We'll start preparing them for the fast path of Inshallah, inshallah, I will be able to uh, personally uh, also uh, teach that. Uh, it's not for uh, someone asked if you could skip the approbation in the four uh, cities that you mentioned. There are not cities, there are uh, uh, states. So uh, a lot of cities uh, are in those states. Uh, you can. Um, I I think one of Al Faisal's students got uh, skipped after me. Also, I skipped that in uh, at the end of two thousand nineteen. Uh, I guess it has to be uh, easier now, inshallah. Uh, fellowship in Germany. Uh, once you reach the end of your residency program, you just uh, there is. There is a pathway. Uh, you will the hospital itself will, will help you with that. They will apply for you, and then you'll have to do the uh, exam. It's it's a one exam. Uh, if you pass it, you will be uh, you will be facharts or a specialist here in Germany. Uh, but this is too far away, to be honest. I don't have so much information about that. Uh, I know that there is a logbook for everyone, an inter uh, electric logbook in in the website of. Uh, uh, what is it? Ah, I forgot it. Erste Kammer. It's called Erste Kammer in Germany. So uh, you just uh, there is a logbook where you collect whatever requirements you did. Uh, your director would uh, sign it, and uh, you just send it to them. So you so you could just up, update or like update them that you're doing your uh, you're doing your requirements. So for example, for for me, you have to do. Uh, for example, 10 amputations per year or like 25 amputations per year. So I get to collect the ORs or the operations that I did, the amputations that I did and let my uh, let my director sign them and I send it to them. So they will know I, I'm, I'm on the pathway. I'm working towards my uh, uh, after that, I get to do the exam, inshallah. But like, this is far away. Uh, yeah, so uh, the names, I'll, I'll, I'll list the names of the states in the um, in the Facebook group, inshallah. I'll just, uh, they're very hard to memorize. Uh, it's okay. So uh, there's Schleswig-Holstein, uh, Bremen, Bremenhaven, and, and the third one, I'll just need to revise my info because uh, I don't want to give you wrong info, information. 
And uh, yeah, uh, this is Germany. Uh, one thing I got to uh, experience is uh, attending a Barcelona match against uh, Atletico Madrid, seeing uh, Messi score, which is which is not gonna happen anymore. But uh, this is something um, I'll tell you something. Uh, I'll tell you um, like some info about this trip. I w I went for a, a weekend to Germany, and it cost me approximately 100 euros. Uh, plane was like for 10 euros from Germany to Spain. Uh, coming back was 12 and uh, yeah it costs you nothing to do um, tourism here uh, like inside Europe um, and this is something really awesome you get to see whole Europe uh, you get some experiences like I consider those residency ship residency years uh, they're your youth you have to use them you have to enjoy them um, also something good in Germany they're very strict about their vacations uh, you have to get your, you have to take your vacations you have to uh, like they care about your well-being as a human being more than you just come here to work and then uh leave uh someone said some uh, some of us are not from El Faisal. could you send facebook link in our emails uh i don't have your emails if i don't know if the guys have your emails lukman uh you could uh, help the help the guys more with this uh, but Doctor, like maybe we can send it now in the chat. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure you can. Uh, for everyone yeah. that was asking about the Facebook group, I just added it to the chat. If you guys are not from El Faisal, you just type anything. Uh, uh, because uh, I made it like a year ago, like less than less than a year, but uh, Corona came, and everything was stopped, and I was changing my job, so uh, uh, it took me a while to do it. But uh, I'll accept everyone who applies here. So someone asked: so instead of doing residency first for like three years and then go for sub specialization, uh, like in the U.S. and Germany, you directly do them for five to six years at once, right? Yeah, this is. Uh, this is the thing. Uh, there is in the website in every uh, for every state there is a website for the maqabat uh, al where they tell you like if you want to be this you have to do this and this and this. For example, uh, for me as a vascular surgeon, I got into vascular surgery. Uh, I will finish as a vascular surgeon after six years. So, uh, but during those six years, uh, it's already been planned with the director that I would get to spend six months in ICU, six months in the ER and uh, six months in the general surgery. So um, those are the requirements from Naqabat Atabba, but every hospital, they know that you, you need that for you to be able to finish your residency program. So they plan everything for you once you, uh, once you apply. So in the interview, uh, you get to ask them, do you guys have a program done for, for me to finish or you just want me to work with you and leave? So uh, they don't do that, but like you get, I mean, uh, you get to... Uh, you get, you have the, you are in the position to ask them also if they can provide you everything you need for your program to finish. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my my program director has a full program for me to finish uh, to finish my uh, subspecialty with him, inshallah. Uh, so, uh, I'm not from uh, Faisal University. I live in Jeddah and I graduate from Masar University for Science and Technology. Okay, you can apply for uh, you can apply for uh, us. Uh, someone says Robert Mushagal. Uh, let me check. Uh, we'll check that. We'll check Robert, and uh, we'll send you. Uh, we'll send you guys. Uh, we'll send you the the link, inshallah. Uh, I don't think I could do it right now. Uh, we'll see about it. We'll update you about it. Don't worry. So uh, that's it. Thanks, Sean. If you guys have any questions, please uh, please let me know. Uh, I think if someone has a question, he who he, he wants to ask them, uh, he, you could ask. You can unmute yourself and ask also.
Welcome, 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 everyone. Uh, as I told you, uh, on the Facebook group, inshallah, all the questions, I will answer them personally. I will be updating, uh, uh, I will be uploading and updating the group on regular basis, inshallah. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is a um, big question. Do hijabis get the same chances? Yeah, they do. Uh, in our hospital, there are uh, a couple of hijabis in um, some state that uh, has more than uh, that has more immigrants than others. Uh, they have also more uh, hijabis than uh, now. My wife uh, herself is a hijabi. She's uh, doing hospitation in our hospital. Inshallah, she'll has she'll have a chance in uh, working with us. Inshallah. Can I just say something? Uh, yep. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to advise you all not to listen to all the rumors that you hear. Yeah, I heard a lot of rumors about hijab and racism here, but um, believe me, it's not true. Of course, there are some cases, but otherwise. Um, there are just rumors uh, and actually they know about us more than we know about ourselves. So um, yeah, they're a little bit not very friendly when you don't talk to them, but from the inside they are so friendly and they accept uh, other nationalities and other religions. Yeah, uh, that, uh, in Germany you will find, yeah, you will find uh, Good people will find bad people. But the thing is that the system itself is very strict against racism. So if there is someone, uh, if you, uh, if, like there are, there are, I heard, I heard of a couple of cases where someone was racist and they were strictly punished. They were taken by the police. So it's not just like someone throws a word and goes and it just goes. Um, my aunt herself, she was uh, here in Germany or she is in Germany. Uh, at one, uh, yeah, in one, uh, in one occurrence, one woman told her that she was, uh, she's wearing hijab and she came here in Germany just to steal the money or something. So what racist people say, uh, and she was in the train. She told, uh, she told the, like, uh, there are info buttons in the train. So my aunt just pressed them. She told them what happened. Police itself stopped the train and they came, they took the woman with them. So it's something they don't tolerate here, to be honest. So uh, yeah, uh, you hear a lot of you hear a lot of rumors that Germans are racist or something. No, at all. Uh, as I told you, not like uh, if you came here and then you found some someone who's racist, you told, you, you tell me like I lied to you. No, but I mean like the ninety percent, the ninety, the, uh, like the mean of people are really, really, really nice. Uh, there are exceptions of all, of course. So uh, uh, one more minute, uh, if no one asks, we'll just be sold. Doctor, but in terms of the robot, if there is any possibility. Okay, we're going to work on the robot. I mean, I can't work on it right now. Uh, I'll work on uh, the link itself. I'll send it to the guys and they'll share it with, uh, with, with you. Of course, they have all your emails. They could... Uh, they could contact you. Uh, let me just uh, check if I can do it. I could actually only invite people. I don't know if I could share the group itself. I don't know how to invite people from outside the group. Uh,
So I'll share it with Allah and Allah uh, will share it with you guys because I don't know how to share it on the group itself. This is the invitation. Uh... Okay, you got it, Allah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much. Uh, it was a pleasure and it will always be a pleasure. If you guys have any questions, you can post them on the group uh, or you could uh, contact me directly. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the wonderful presentation. It was indeed very beneficial and uh, we truly value your experience and guidance. I'd also like to thank um, AMBOSS and DAAD for their constant support. To everyone in the audience, thank you for joining us today. And our team hopes that you found this session as informative as we did. If you have any more questions, then please feel free to uh, put them in the chat. Also, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I'll be here for the next five minutes. Uh, so if you guys have any question, uh, or like, not like the five minutes, five minutes if no one asked. <laughs> If you came up with a question in two minutes, I'll be I'll be more glad to answer them. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, if you have any any question about Germany, uh, please feel free to ask. Okay. Um, also, guys, please make sure to register for the upcoming CGS Germany webinar titled "Medical Residency from the Lens of a Program Director," and it'll be by Professor uh, Sebold, who is currently one of the deputy medical directors at. Uh, at a hospital in Berlin, Germany. Um, the link for the uh, webinar has been posted in the chat. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive our uh, latest updates regarding events. Um, the links are in the uh, chat again. If you have any further questions uh, and would like to contact the IO, then you can also do that. We have inserted the link over there in the chat. Uh, again, uh, thank you, Dr. Shabal Luth, and everyone in the audience. And we hope to see you again in the future. Wishing you all the day ahead. Thank you so much, guys, for your interest, for your uh, kindness. Uh, yeah, I hope you uh, wish you all the best and hope to see all of you fulfilling your dreams, inshallah, in the future.